Youth Search has been one of the most popular packages to analyze 16S data, especially in the past. It's available from the drive5.com website, and it's not an open source software, so you can download for free if you're an academic at a 32-bit version that is limited in, in power, or you can buy the full version. The reason to have a look at the workflow uh, with Usearch is mainly to understand the different steps that can be involved in a typical metabarcoding analysis workflow, and also some of the issues that uh, existed and that some pipelines like Chime tried to solve. So in this case, we have three samples, sample one, two, and three. Our first step uh, is to create a combined FASTQ file with all the reads. In order to know what sample each read belongs to, a use search can allow us to relabel the reads prepending the sample name. In order to identify high quality representative sequences, we can use the quality scores in the FASTQ format to discard or trim the reads, and uh, use such as a, um, a filtering algorithm that we can use. Uh, so we end up with a FASTI file with a set of sequences. At, the, at this moment, we don't uh, need to know uh, what sample each uh, sequence did belong to, because at the, now we are focusing on creating a set of representative sequences, so it doesn't matter which sample they belong to. When using an OTU-based approach, it's really important to pull all the samples together and the representative sequences will be unique to that sample dataset. While when performing a denoising approach that is also supported by Usearch, uh, it's easier to merge multiple datasets because uh, all the representative sequences should be uh, equal while when performing a, a clustering the representative sequence of the cluster can change in different datasets. So uh, if combining multiple datasets with OTUs, we need to uh, restart from the beginning. We have the replication step here. So we want to avoid analyzing twice the same sequence. This was done especially for historical reasons to save computational power. And so we, we replicate the sequences, we keep every sequence only once, but also in this case, we need to propagate some kind of metadata. In this case, as you can see in, uh, uh, in green, we are keeping track of um, how many sequences equal to that one were present in the filtered dataset. They are sorted by decreasing uh, size. So at the end of the file, we will see a long tail of single tons of sequences that were only present once, and that probably are just uh, sequencing errors. Now, we can either choose a clustering algorithm and create a set of OTUs, or we can use a denoising algorithm and uh, uh, ends up ending up with an um, um, amplicon sequence variant. So in both cases, we will get another FASTA file with a set of representative sequences. Finally, we can assign the taxonomy, comparing our sequences with, with one of the many uh, databases available. And now that we have our representative sequences, we can go back to the row reads and map them against the OTUs, count the occurrences, and create a feature table. That was also called OTU table, and it's a matrix uh, usually in this format, so where samples are the columns, and each row represents a different uh, representative sequence, and then you have the counts of how many reads did map on that OTU from each sample. This is a row result. And combining the feature table, the taxonomy, and some kind of metadata, we can then perform more analysis like normalization, uh, exploring the diversity in each sample called alpha diversity, or compare the diversity across samples. So using as a matrices from the beta diversity, we can perform statistical tests like uh, differential abundance of representative sequences, and so on and forth. So let's try to see uh, this workflow done from the command line with uh, usearch, mainly because we will have the opportunity to have a look at each intermediate file and uh, get a sense of uh, one of the many workflows that are available. We will use once again the reads from the MySeq SOP dataset from Pat Schloss Lab. And um, let's have a look at the reads directory. This is the set of reads that came from the zip archive. So as a note, it's important to remember that usearch, unlike many other 
bioinformatics programs does not support gzipped reads. So if we have our data set in gzip uh, format, we need first to g unzip the reads. Now we have paired end reads, so we have an extra step to begin with, that is merging the overlapping reads. And this is one of the tasks that you search and vSearch um, they do very, very, very well. So the command here is you search dash fastq underscore merge pairs. And then we need to give all the forward files. So in this case, reads star r1 star. Users will automatically pick the reverse files. Then we ask users to relabel the reads. There is a, a trick that is using the at symbol. Uh, user search will use the sample name from the file name to rename the reads. Then we need to specify the output, so minus fastq out. Uh, that can be like merge.fq. And I can try with enter and see how it goes. So, in the end, we merged 71% of the reads. Let's see why some reads were not merged. So for 28% of the reads we had too many differences, so more, more than five. And uh, consider that we can allow uh, a bigger amount of differences, we can try to see if this, really going, this is going to improve uh, the final outcome. So uh, let's add uh, the parameter fastq underscore max diffs. Let's say up to 15. As you can see now we have almost 90% of the reads merged. It depends here. The, the more greedy your alignment is, uh, the more reads you align, but probably there is a, a small chance of introducing some artifacts. Uh, in the case of 16S, it's really small. But we can settle here, so we are, we are quite happy with this result. And so let's have a look. Uh, we can, for example, use secfo stats, minus minus nice, to have a nice table, and see what happened here. So now, uh, we have this many sequences and the average length is 252. So there, there was a very good overlap between the, the, two, um, the two pairs, as uh, we could see also from the statistics. And now it's the time to filter the low quality reads. So you search, ask your filter. This is the input file. We can specify immediately the output file, so first a out, in this case the output is in fast format, so it can be filt.fa. I will add a new line, so with a backslash I will go to a new line, but remember that this greater than is not part of the command. Now we need to specify what kind of uh, criteria for the filtering. For example, the maximum number of expected errors per reads. Uh, something like 0 0.5 means that on average we want an error in every two reads. Uh, we can use this. We can add a um, minimum length requirement if you want to uh, discard some kind of artifacts. We can specify that we don't tolerate n's, n's in our reads, so zero maximum number of uh, n's. And finally, we can also ask to relabel the reads to have a nicer output, for example, um, relabel field. Let's have a look now at the filtered file. Yes, we can also use sexful stats to compare the number of reads. So we can compare merge and filled. And as we can see, there was a small decrease, not a dramatic one. Uh, but for example, the minimum length increased because we did add a cutoff. Now it's the time to dereplicate. Uh, for this, we can also use your search. FastX is because the, pro, the algorithms accept both FastA and um, FastQ files. FastA output, unique FA. It's very important to add this size out parameter because otherwise, by default, users will not add the number of reads present in every bucket. And as you can see, now we have that uh, every read is unique. You have the size. And as you can expect, at the tail of the file, there is uh, a set of singletons. So let's count how many reads we have here. So 
So we have 15, almost 16,000 reads. And let's count with grep how many were singleton. Wow, the majority of them are singletons. Now we can either cluster the unique sequences or denoise them. Let's try the denoise approach because it's, it's more similar to what we're going to do with Chime 2 and Data 2. So you search minus u noise 3. The input are the unique sequences. It's important that they have the size. And minus Zotus, because this is how Robert Edgar named the ASVs. So he said, well, why a different, completely different name? They are still OTUs with a zero radius. So you, you are just clustering with very, very stringent with a very, very stringent approach. Uh, this is not completely correct. Sometimes the, the noise can be actually completely different from clustering, but uh, the principle is true. They are operational taxonomic unit. The, the OTUs were not implicitly defined with a radius. Okay, so now we got uh, our representative sequences. And as you could see from here, we had to discard some chimeras and to keep uh, 300 representative sequences that are present in the ASV FA file. As, uh, as a test, we can also do the OTU peaking, but we can do that, this later. Now let's see how to make the OTU tables. So in this case, we need to map with the OTU tab command our merged reads, because in that case, let's have a look. We relabel the reads with the sample name. So explain this trick. You search OTU tab is able to map the reads and to split them in the appropriate sample. The target for this mapping, so the database, is the set of representative sequences, so ASV.fa. And in this case, the command for the output is OTU tab out. Um, let's call it OTU tab row ASV. Here, the more threads you have, the faster it will be, so we can add the, the maximum that we have available. Now that we are done, we can have a look with less minus s to avoid the word wrap. So let's see how this audio table is formatted. So as we said, each sample is a column and each row is a different amplicon sequence variant or zero radius audio. We can gather some statistics with you search audio tab stats. So we have the total number of reads that we mapped across all the samples, the number of samples and the number of views, this is where the input, um, and then we have the sample size, so the, the smaller sample has uh, almost 3k counts, the maximum is 70k, and then you have the median, the mean. So with, uh, with our bunch of commands, we did multi paired and reads filtered from quality, then pick the uh, unique, identify the amplicon sequence variants, and then generate an, an OTU table. And now we are ready to see how to do this with Chime 2.